Should we talk about SpaceX? Yes. Let's let's do that because that's been one of the, the other big investments you've made. It's a private company, obviously, but it's in your mutual fund. Yes. So the two largest investments, we have two of the largest, Tesla's the largest and SpaceX is fourth or fifth largest. And those two companies, Tesla's 10%, SpaceX is 4%. So that's our 14% of our money is in those two companies. 86% of our money is not in those two companies. And those two companies are going to be among the fastest, we will be among the fastest growing companies that we invest in for a long time to come. SpaceX is a private company still. It's being valued in the stock market it, uh, on transactions for $150 billion. That's in the private market in terms of how people are thinking about that private valuation. That's the transactions are taking place at $150 billion valuation. Uh, I think that ultimately, uh, we think that by the time they go public with SpaceX, with Starlink, in the next three years, 2027 or so, four years, uh, the company will be worth 250 to 300 billion dollars, and I think that by 2030, it could be worth somewhere around 500 billion dollars. So I think we can make four times our money. Over Help the us understand how how do you get there? What has to happen between Custom now and then? And why do you think they're going to go public? Is there there's a need to for exits? Well, start, well, a lot of people have been investors for a long time, and they probably want to exit. I don't want an exit in my lifetime. Uh, but uh, there are people who want exits. Uh, the idea, first of all, what they have is that Elon had the idea, Elon Musk had the idea to go to Mars. In order to go to Mars, you need to have reusable rockets. That's what he's developed. No one else has been able to have a rocket you can fly over and over and over again. And he analogizes it to if you're going to go from New York to London and you fly in a 747 and you throw it out after every time right. you use it, it's going to be a very expensive trip. So he wants to have a rocket that can go up, up and down. We call it, we think about it as the railroad to space. Just like the old railroad opened up the west, the railroad that they have is the rocket that goes up and down and you can use over and over again. So other people will cost them to get to space 100, 200, 300 million dollars. They use a rocket one time and throw it away. And then in order to justify spending that much money on a rocket, you have to have satellites that cost hundreds of millions of dollars also. What we're doing is low Earth orbital rockets, uh, uh, satellites, that can go over and over again. And that's a business that can ultimately, Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs think that the opportunity is for $1.2 trillion of annual revenues. $1.2 trillion, no one else can do this. We now have satellites in space that are flipping around. You can, you can watch yep. them. Someone was telling me last night that they actually watched them in, in a string. You yes, you them, can see them string. I've right? seen it. And so it's amazing. But all of a sudden, there's like 5,000 satellites up, and you can have internet everywhere. Right. One more point. The United States government feels it's so important to have internet access and all around the country to everyone have it that in order to, do, to get internet, it costs you $16,000 a mile to string wire in the ground, 16,000 a mile. They just had an article in the Wall Street Journal a week or two ago that talked about they wanted to uh, wire up houses in Nevada desert. And there were $53,000 per house. Biden has a $44 billion program to hook right. up. So instead of having $53,000 a house, you can buy it an, a, right. an antenna for five hundred dollars, right? And you skip the whole thing. But my question instead is, of 16, right, instead but, of fifty-three thousand dollars, do we not think that there's going to be a competitor to this? And the reason I ask you, so for example, on the satellite front, Amazon has this thing called the uh, uh, Kuiper Project, mm -hmm. right? And they're hoping to, to get into this space. I imagine there may be a couple others, or do you look at this and say it's like all it's like all the automobile makers who are now Tesla, and, and look how far behind they really are. China feels that. Uh, seven or eight years that they could be able to reland to, to use a rocket over and over again, um, and I'm sure they will be able to. It's the United. It's the China's a brilliant people there. They work hard uh, uh, and uh, they're well educated. They, right. You know, so basically, of course, they're going to be able to do it ultimately. But we're doing it now, and we've been doing it now for several years already. When we began to invest in, in SpaceX, so we invested in Tesla 2014 to 2016. We invested starting in, in uh, right. SpaceX in summer 2017. How much do you worry about regulation? That was before right. they had satellites. How much do you worry about regulation, given that, that he is effectively has a monopoly right now on getting to space, right, and on these satellites? And the U.S. government is so reliant on it. I mean, we're talking about uh, the war in Ukraine. We're now talking about the war uh, in Israel. 
there's an enormous amount of power in that. And the question is whether at some point the government says, not that they're going to try to take take it from him, but try to control it in ways that maybe... Uh, well, someone else has to be able to do it. No one else has been able to do it so far. So he has, by, if he's going to have 20 or 30,000 satellites, how does someone compete against that? So ultimately, I'm sure that, you know, they'll break apart, like they'll break apart AWS and, and, uh, and Amazon. And someday they'll break apart probably uh, the, the, the launch business uh, from the satellite business. This is sort of a first step, the satellite business. But once you, once you have all the satellites up there, then how does someone compete against that?